Over 62 years ago, when I was born, my parents already had four boys. So I became the fifth and the leader of the pack from the rear. For those of you who have male children, I'm sure it's, there's no need to tell you the story of the manner of damage and rampage that we did. Now, it got to a point where my father became a philosopher by force. And his nickname became Boys Who Will Be Boys. But that was as far as the indulgence was concerned. Beyond that, he was very strict with us. I served mass as a primary school pupil and worked close in the church. In the, at the CMS Grammar School, Lagos, where I was for seven years and rose to be a senior prefect, I was also a choir leader and I worked closely uh, with men of God. Now, I do not say this to boast. I say it to underline an illusion that was prevalent then, that if you walk closely with men of God, heaven was guaranteed. And so, throughout my university days, and 12 years into my practice as a lawyer, if you spoke to me about accepting Christ, as your Lord and personal Savior, I simply put it to you. And that was the end of the discussion. But then there is an appointed time in the calendar of God. That appointed time came on the 16th of September, 1992. And God, in his wisdom, shut down my intellect because I was sleeping. The salvation package came in a dream where I was in pitch darkness. There was light at the periphery of where the dream took place, and I stretched out my hand and cried out to the person holding the light. And I said to him, if you take me out of this darkness, because it was obvious that my life was in danger, I would follow you. To my joy and relief, the hand stretched out, <clears throat> and took me out and the next morning it was actually early in the morning early, later that day on my own I got into my car found the next church that wasn't where I was worshipping regularly and um, as God in his mercy would have it when the sermon came on it centered on from darkness into his marvelous light. And that is how I surrendered my life to Christ. And since then, my life has not been the same. And to prove that it was he, he gave me a gift. And that gift is the still small voice that constantly says to me, this is the way to walk in it. Now, I came into Cardina to do auto business, but that's not the story for now. If I have time, I'll touch it. Dr. Late Dr. James Akuse introduced me to the full gospel. On the 23rd of February 2009 was a Monday. We had a meeting, and I had planned to travel to Lagos by road in a brown new car, uh, a jeep that I took out of my stock. So I had all the original documents in the car. My fellowship members prayed with me because I had a burden in my heart that the journey might not go too well. And we all agreed in prayer and they pronounced that I will go safely and return safely. So we took off. Incidentally, in February of every year, my local assembly usually has a fast. 
Uh, I'm looking at my brother, uh, Folaguda. He knows that in our local church in Lagos, would have a fast. That morning, some, my housekeeper whispered to me that, uh, said to me that I should eat, at least since I was going by road. But as I made to do so, the still small voice warned me not to eat anything, and I dropped the food and I left. This letter is the extract from the crime diary issued by the police of the area command in Ijesha area command near Ilesha. I will read just a few lines from it. It says, today being 22nd of February 2009, at about 11 hours, one Mr. Cyril Obekene reported that his care current salon car with registration, num registration number so so and so had been stolen by armed robbers. Now, this is not the testimony. The testimony is that 15 minutes after the robbers left the spot of the incident, they discovered the original document of the car. And they obviously took counsel that if they killed the owner, it would be easier for them to sell the car when people are worrying about the cops. So I was shocked when they showed up. And um, one of them came down from the car while the others remained. He approached me, started an argue, argument about tracker or demobilizer or no demobilizer. And before I could say Jack, he slapped me across the face. While I was still trying to recover from the shock of the slap, he brought out a gun from under his agbada, took a measured aim at the center of my head, and the shot rang out. I fell to the ground, and the villagers from a safe distance were commenting on how wicked he was to have taken my car and killed me. I could hear the voice, and instinctively, I tried to get up. Then the still small voice again said to me, pretend to be dead. Now, at that point, two things occurred to me. One, that I wasn't physically dead. Two, that I was lying face down. And so, it was possible for the masked man to assume that he had achieved the maximum effect of the shot. And I stretched out. Sometimes African magic can be useful. I tried some African magic stunt, stretched out, and he was satisfied I was dead and he left. Now it was the turn of the villagers to gather around what they thought was the cops. They made comments of how many people had been killed in that same village in the last couple of days, about four or five. Um, when I was satisfied that the people had left, I got up and everybody took off in different directions. Um, then I touched my head. I touched this head. There was no scratch on this head. There was no drop of blood from this head. When the shot rang out, I heard it was finished. It was at that point I realized that the finishing I had was the finishing on the cross. The big man amongst the villagers took me to a corner and said to me that he would pay anything to be fortified 
to us to avert the kind of thing that just happened. Then I told him that it was Jesus because he who lives with me is greater than he who lives in the world. Glory to God. I'm sure you have been blessed today. If you just made a decision for Jesus Christ, why don't you write to us? And we shall send you a free copy of our booklet, Now That You Have Received Christ. And should you want to be a part of our worldwide fellowship of businessmen and women, contact us at the best hotel around you, or Ibadan, full gospel area office, 